Hello, and welcome to the C3 Podcast, Code Conscious Conversations. I'm Dr. Lisa Piper here with Wendy Cohn Osborne. We are the founders of Code Health, an innovative therapeutic product company with safe, non-toxic, drug-free alternatives to over-the-counter and prescription medications. We love having these conscious conversations with like-minded people who are out there doing their thing in the world, making the world a better place, and here we are. We are here today with a very special guest, Bryce Gonzalez. He is the owner of Revo Wellness in St. Petersburg, Florida. Bryce specializes in peptide therapy, and he's also the host of Peak Performance Podcasts. He's known as, I'm just going to say it, Spicy Brycey on Instagram. (laughs) I also really want to mention that Bryce is a veteran serving 11 years in the Navy. So welcome, Bryce, to the C3 podcast, and thank you so much for your service. Hey, that was amazing, ladies. Yeah, I have my own podcast, and I would never just open the intro like that. We re-record it. That way we don't screw it up whenever we do it. <laughs> I appreciate you guys having me on. It was my pleasure, you know, serving in the Navy. It was, it was a lot of fun. I met a lot of cool people, did a lot of cool stuff. Uh, But that chapter has closed, and now, yeah, I'm over here with Revo, preaching the peptide gospel and just trying to get people to wake up to, you know, making healthier decisions. Yeah, so you're like a specialist in the peptide business, and we're kind of specialists in the cellular signaling business, so it's similar but a little bit different. But if I understand correctly, peptides are really molecules that have two or more amino acids. I know from being a hairstylist for years and years that when you have chains of amino acids that come together, it forms a protein. And in hair, that's keratin. So what kind of peptides are you working with and how do they differ? And tell us about this thing. Yeah, so that you're exactly right. They are peptides are chains of amino acids between two and 50 amino acids long, anything over 50 becomes a polypeptide. And then once you start getting into the hundreds, you start to form like proteins. So these are signaling molecules. They basically have a specific function in the body and they just kind of, you know, modulate things. They modulate cells to essentially just remind your body what it's capable of doing. So for instance, something like thymosin alpha-1, which is one of my favorite peptides. This is a immune modulator. It acts in the body on the thymus gland. The thymus gland is a small gland that sits right above your heart. When you're young, the thymus gland is really active. It's kicking ass. It's it's keeping you healthy, keeping your immune system tip top. As you age, you that thymus gland begins to shrink, becomes less active. So if you're familiar with T cell, the T in T cell is short for thymus. That's where these, that's where the T cells, the killer cells of your, the attacker cells of your immune system are created. What thymus and alpha one does is it upregulates the thymus gland, it stimulates it and just causes it to basically upregulates both sides of your immune system. So not just the attacker cells, but it actually upregulates. If you think of your immune system as like two separate parts, the the Marines that have to go carry out the mission, and then you have the generals that tell the Marines what to do. It's one of the only things that we know of that upregulates both sides. So why that's significant is somebody who is suffering from like an autoimmune issue. We don't want to just upregulate the the Marines. We don't want them to be attacking their own body. And with thymus and alpha-1, we've seen really, really amazing results with uh, you know rheum- rheumatoid arthritis, all sorts of autoimmune type issues. Yeah, you first cool. of all, I I love that analogy of the Marines and the generals because it yeah. makes it does. It makes so much sense when you think about it that way. And I know that you and I had a in depth conversation and we talked about the fact that these peptides are working naturally within the body. And I think when people hear about different and new types you know, new, and I say that with, you know, quotes around it, types of 
therapies and they hear about something like peptides and it's foreign, it's scary to some people. So how would you explain the use of peptides to someone that has never heard of it before or maybe learned about it, like Lisa said, in school, and how it can be used in a natural way? We'll just talk in generalities. Most of these are injectable medications. So that's not something that a lot of people are open to, right? That's it's associated with drug use. And it some people just have a fear of needles. So that's the biggest hurdle when it comes to these medications. I believe that the pharmaceutical industry has kind of looked over peptides because they didn't believe that there would be adaptation of them. I mean, there's a lot of other reasons why I think the pharmaceutical industry kind of didn't go pursue the the peptide route, or at least in a limited scope. But that is probably number one, is because most people aren't willing to inject themselves. The second part of, of why peptides are less mainstream, in my opinion, is you have to basically reconstitute the medication itself. So you're taking bacteriostatic water, you're drawing it into a draw syringe, then you're putting that correct amount of bacteriostatic water into the lyophilized puck to reconstitute that medication. And then you have to do math, right? You have to figure out how many micrograms, how many, most people have that, like I have a problem. Already over my head. <laughs> I, have, I probably have 120, you know, monthly customers on like for like the weight loss peptides, semaglutide, terzepatide. And, you know, most, I would say probably 90% of them, they don't know the difference between a milligram and a milliliter. And that's fine, but it is confusing and you have to know what you're doing or you could, you know, the difference between a microgram and a milligram is huge and you don't want to be confusing the two. So there is some stigma there. But if I'm just talking to regular people, the honestly, the way that I, I try to couch it is these are, in my opinion, they are the, the key to vital health. So with a pharmaceutical drug, you're basically introducing something that's completely foreign and it's going to blow up a lot of different processes that the body is going to be doing naturally. So now we have all these other undesirable side effects. With peptides, in most cases, all of the side effects are positive. So while something might have a, for example, like the intended effect with the weight loss peptides, while something might have the intended effect of weight loss, we also see blood pressure improve. We see cholesterol improve. We see a reduced risk of heart disease and stroke. On that front, there's nothing that we know of. There's no prescription medication that is as effective at treating heart disease and stroke as terzepatide. And it's like four or five times as effective as what we previously have known to be true. So the side effects are always positive. They're a way to break the chain of like polypharmacy. There's most people are over the age of 55 and above around five different pharmaceutical medications. And they all end up leading to having to take yet another at some point. So while I'm not against using pharmaceutical medications for, you know, to stop something from happening, like let's say, you know, if your blood pressure truly is out of control and you need to get on a blood pressure medication, your doctor should be saying, hey, we're going to use the lowest effective dose and we're going to work on cleaning up your diet. We're going to work on cleaning up, you know, moving our body more. And then we're going to see you back in two months and we're going to reassess. And hopefully the intent there is to get you off of that medication in two months. Not just here, take this pill for the rest of your life. And, you know, that now they have a, a, a lifelong repeat customer that eventually other things are going to start to go wrong in their body because they're not addressing the root cause. Whereas peptides can actually heal the body and prevent these things from happening in the first place. You know, the thing with traditional medical or medicine, actually, it's, it's really a sick care. And because of the pharmaceuticals, they keep you sick. Like you said, they they disrupt other bodily situations. And then you need another medication. I love traditional medicine, allopathic medicine, because 
you have brilliant people that have developed brilliant technology, even these medicines. I mean, look, if you break your arm, you need to go to the doctor, you need to have an x-ray, you need to get a cast put on, and you need some medication to help you with that pain temporarily. Then the cast comes off, you come off the medication, and you get back to your regular life. If that were the case for all of these things, but unfortunately, we also bring in different things like lifestyle and how people eat. And really, I think a lot of it comes down with down to mindset and how people cope with stress. Because if you're not eating healthy, then you're going to end up overweight. If you end up overweight, you're going to have high blood pressure. You're going to have high cholesterol because if you're overweight, you're not eating the right things. So it's like this vicious cycle. And really, at the end of the day, we just need to help people solve their problems mentally, emotionally, physically, and even spiritually. I mean, this as a whole. And I think that's just one of the things that allopathic medicine currently doesn't address. No, you're absolutely right. You hurt your knee. The doctor is going to, you know, give you some a pain medication. He's not going to tell you to lose weight. He's not going to tell you to, you know, he's not going to prescribe physical therapy. He's not going to tell you to get in the pool. He's just going to give you a pill and be on his way. And I mean, the the danger of pain pills is we've seen what's happened. Somebody has a hidden propensity to being addicted to an opiate. And you give this person a pain pill that could be a mother of three and they take it. And next thing you know, they're on a downward trajectory. You just ruin that person's life. Yeah. How many other lives in the process? That's right. Uh, That's right. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty crazy that that's the system that we're in, but I'm trying to do my best to, to change that at least, you know, from a, a more holistic, more focused on personal accountability too. Like I can't tell you how many tough conversations I have to have with grown strangers that come in here and I have to be like, okay, here's the mirror. What have you been doing to impact your own health? Are you just relying on, you know, peptides? Cause you can't out peptide a bad lifestyle. It's not possible. No. We will address that first. I think that's, the human nature, people just want immediate gratification, right? And they're looking for something that it's just, you know, say a magic pill or whatever it is. And they don't look at the bigger picture, their overall well-being. So yeah, you must see so many people that come through. You're a well-known, established clinic and the, it must be tough sometimes to really, I mean, not tough to be honest, because that's your job, but really to have these people take a good look at themselves. And sure, you could help them, but they have to look at everything else. Yeah. Whenever I've had to have those conversations, they were honest with me, which I didn't expect, at least not 100%, right? They'd be like, no, you're right. I haven't been in the gym. I've been meaning to. And I'm like, okay, well, that's number one. Are you sleeping? If you're not sleeping, I can't do anything for you. But number two is getting in the gym. It's There's no substitute for it. Absolutely zero. You have to put resistance on your muscles a couple of times a week. Your VO2 max, it's like our greatest predictor of health and longevity. It's just your resting metabolic rate. If you have more muscle on your frame, you burn more calories at rest. Think of it as you know passive income. A lot of people who have been misled with diet culture, you know, these these snacks that are like 90 calorie snacks. I can't tell you how many times I have to be like, stop eating that. Right. Don't eat. Right. Cal- eat enough calories to just to sustain your lifestyle, lift weights, relax on the cardio. And let's try to fix your metabolism because talking to some lady last night she's like yeah i went to another clinic they prescribed me a diet of 800 calories a day i would be starving (laughs) oh my gosh (laughs) you are like your metabolism responds to that your metabolism's its only recourse is to burn almost no calories i mean was that like a a, like for two days maybe just to reset the body (laughs) i don't know what the duration was but i don't think so incredible Absolutely incredible. 
But yes. yet, you know, when someone comes to, you know, to Revo Wellness and you're speaking to them, I think it says a lot for what you're doing because you truly are the epitome of a healthy person. You're fit and you e exemplify what you are teaching. So it actually makes someone, you know, as they're speaking to you, looking at you, think to themselves, look, you know what? He's doing something right. There must be something right that he's doing. So that is an incredible benefit that you do have. Definitely helps. I was talking with one of my, she's a, a client here, but she's my friend's mother. Anytime she comes in, we talk for like an hour. And she was telling me, she was like, hey, you know, I, I had to get on a cholesterol medication. And I was trying to explain to her my my theory on cholesterol. And she's like, well, that's not what the doctor told me. I was like, is, is your doctor, does your doctor take care of himself? She said, oh, God, no. Right. She exactly. Like, she didn't say no. She said, oh, God, no. Right. Like, how is this person in charge of managing your health? How has that happened? You know, if an alien civilization were to come to the earth and, and take me to your healthcare professionals and you walk them into a hospital, they wouldn't understand how we got into this situation. That's right. Yeah, That's right. I think part of where I also like benefit to my clients is that, yes, I am healthy. I do take care of myself, but I'm also probably busier than most of the people that walk through my door. So when they tell me they're busy, I'm not like, oh, wow, you're busy. Okay, that's fine then. <laughs> right. I think we can relate. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so I then tell them that's not an excuse. Like it's, right. it's kind of, it has to be non-negotiable for you. Like I'll come home some nights at 11 o'clock. I make sure that I like I, I try to help them come up with ways to execute a plan despite being busy, right? So is going to the gym at 11 o'clock at night the most realistic option? No. But if you have a kettlebell at your house, you, you know, you're, you're dog ass tired. But can you, could you stand to swing that kettlebell for 20 minutes just so you could do something that day? Right. Yeah. I, a lot of people get into their own head. My dad, my dad, this is a great example. My dad's an accountant, right? He is very black and white about everything. He, he's very analytical. Was he and, military also? No, he's not. He was an athlete, actually. So it's weird because he wouldn't fit the stereotypical athlete, like successful athlete. He was on the junior Olympic team, won a gold medal for the U.S. in, in racquetball, won like three or four national titles at University of Memphis, professional racquetball player when I was growing up. Wow. Like, cool. Like, your dad's the man. Your dad's the man. I'm walking yeah. My dad's a man. Get out of my way. <laughs> but anyways, he, he's an accountant, right? He came in to pick up the medication not that long ago. And he was he hit me with the, you know, my like, dad, how's your workouts going? And I know he hasn't been working out. Well, you know, I just haven't had a whole lot of time. I'm like, dad, if you worked out every single time, you only had 10 minutes. What kind of impact would that have over the rest of your life? That's compounding interest. And conversely, if you throw those 10 minutes away because you think they're not significant and you throw those 10 minutes away every time you had 10 minutes to work out, that also compounds. Not the way we want it to, but people get in their head, well, if I don't have two hours to work out, then what's the point? Right. It's a great way of looking at it. Yeah. You know, Wendy and I were actually doing some research yesterday and we had this gentleman come in and our research were, you know, we're testing our calm product to see how it affects stress. Mm -hmm. And the, the guy comes in and we already know from the first time that we saw him that his brain is completely dark. It should be all lit up and it's it's all dark and his stress is like a thousand. He's terribly stressed and it's influencing him, but he doesn't realize it because it's just his everyday type of life. Yeah. And so we actually had him come back to see, you know, two weeks after using our product, is his stress decreasing at all as a baseline? And it is. But aside from that, he still got very high stress. 
And the minute he starts talking about the things that stress him out, he's triggered and he goes into this whole stress response. And I'm like, stop talking, you know, because you're feeding that your energy. And I said, I'll tell you what I do. And I shared my personal practice with him. I said, you know, I could be a very high stress person. I'm, I'm an Aries. I'm a fire sign. I'm I'm like, you know, type A personality. Like I'm and I'm black and white, cut and dry, very direct. Wendy's the social engineer. You know, she's the so nice and awesome with people. And I'm just like, you know, this is what I have to say. This is He's it. Saying, <laughs> He's literally saying it like it is to him. And I'm I, like, and I and I did. I was like, you know, I have to get up and I have to start my day with meditation. And then I have to exercise, whether it's 10 minutes, 15 minutes, I have to stretch my body, I have to move my body, I have to set my intention for the day, I have to get my head right. Because if I don't get myself right with myself, then how can I show up for all the people that I have to show up for? And how do I help hold space for people that are dealing with worse things than you can imagine? And, and how do I show up for those people if I didn't show up for myself first? So I tried to share with him that even if it's three minutes of just breathing and just contemplating, start somewhere, just start somewhere, (laughs) you know, small increment changes, you know, make a huge difference. People don't see that, right? They don't see the work that you did that morning before you showed up and they're just like kind of in awe of your poise, right? And they, they just think that you're just born that way. So we have a couple of clients who are like losing massive amounts of weight, not in an unhealthy way, in a very healthy way over a good long period of time. But still, I have people that come in and go, oh, man, you know, I'm not losing that much weight. And I'm like, you're not putting in the work. She's putting she's working five times as hard as you. Have you heard of the Miracle Morning? No, No, but I feel like every morning is a miracle the way I do it. (laughs) Share, share with us the Miracle Morning. Miracle Morning is a book. Essentially what he did was he studied as many successful people as he possibly could. And then he basically boiled it down to like six tenants that all of these guys are girls. And the the Miracle Morning is one hour, the first hour of your day, the first 10 minutes is you exercise. So we're not exercising here to impact health. We're just waking our bodies up. We're staying committed to something. Then there's meditation for 10 minutes, visualization for 10 minutes, reading for 10 minutes, journaling for 10 minutes, and then affirmations. And the thing that I like about it is I kind of will flex it, right? So like normally I'll get on my exercise bike for the first 20 minutes and I'll try to read. I'll try to combined reading and exercising, I'm not getting after it on the bike. I'm not even breaking a sweat when I get off of the bike. I'm just doing it to do it, really, to get my heart rate up, to get myself awake. Then meditate. I'll do I'll do breath work while I do the, the 10 minutes of meditation. And then I usually either read or do the visualization. I don't always make it through the full hour, but just being able to put something like that into practice. And the thing that I like about his methodology is just the way he describes, you know, affirmations and just the way he he puts it in a way that like it doesn't sound so woo woo, right? It sounds like, okay, I get it now. This is how you're supposed to do it. He's like, you don't just wake up and say, oh, I'm rich if you're poor. He's like, that doesn't work. You have to affirm that you're committed to the process. You have to establish the process of how we bring abundance into our life. And then we're going to affirm that we're committed to that process, not wealthy beyond my wildest dreams if you're sitting in a one bedroom apartment. So yeah, there's a there's a big difference between between these type of manifestations, right? And and uh, how you think. But as you were talking, I looked up his name because I just wanted to acknowledge the author. And his name is Hal Elrod, E-L-R-O-D. Yeah. And it's it's called The Miracle Morning, and it's the not-so-obvious secret guaranteed to transform your life before 8 a.m. So thank you for sharing this. And we always love asking our guests, you know, what they do 
to enhance their lives, particularly successful business women and businessmen who have obviously incorporated so many other things into their lives to make themselves and their lives well-rounded. So this is great that you do this as part of your daily practice. If you don't have the time or, you know, you're not committed enough to read the whole book, he did a The Higher Self. He has like The Higher Self podcast. He has an episode, an hour long episode with Hal on the show. And it's really it's a really good recap. Uh, That's Uh, great to know. That's great to know. So with peptide therapies, are there any emerging peptide therapies that could really revolutionize a particular part of medicine that you think if there was yeah, one particular I mean, thing? So thymosin alpha-1, the one that I, I led off with, they're studying it right now for lots of forms of cancer. It has shown to kick the shit out of cancer, all forms of hepatitis, COVID. It is a very, very powerful peptide. It's like It's one of my favorites. But right now, the GLP-1s are all the craze. Ozempic, terzepatide, and they've gotten a bad rap for a couple of different reasons. One is they're breaking the pharmaceutical model. Like I said, like people are are coming off their blood pressure medication. They're now starting to prescribe it for heart disease and stroke. They're realizing now that it repairs neurons in the brain. It's protective of all your organs, can reverse fatty liver disease, super protective of your kidneys, your pancreas, your intestines, like we said, like we mentioned the heart. So it's one of the few things that we, that, that actually addresses fixing the metabolism. When we do that, all these other things fall into place. We, we're reducing inflammation systemically in the body. And again, all these other things fall into place when we start to reduce inflammation. It uh, pain where they're finding out that it's working on the reward center. So somebody who was an alcoholic, someone who had a gambling addiction, tobacco cessation, it has the greatest amount of benefits coming more well-known now. And now they're really starting to say, hey, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Where can we go from here? Terzepatide is the 2.0 version, works on two receptors. Now break it down for us, Bryce, in terms of exactly like what is required. Like say someone is listening to this show and they're like, oh, wow, I really want to try this. Like they're going to come in your office. Tell tell us about what it's like, you know, you, you walk in the door for the first time and somebody wants this. Yeah. So essentially what we do is we we first of all, I screen people. I won't work with people who aren't willing to. Most of this is for weight loss, so I'll just caveat it there. But I screen people, if you're trying to lose weight, I need to know that you're committed to eating a high-protein diet and that you're going to commit to three resistance training sessions per week. As long as you're good with that, then we can continue. Then we talk about, you know, all the things that it can do, how it works on your blood glucose levels. We just basically go back and forth. I make sure that I'm a good candidate for them and vice versa. I want to work with people who are motivated. I want to work with people who aren't, you know, focused on how much weight can I lose in three months? More like I want to make this change right now that's going to impact me for the rest of my life. So from there, if we find out that we're a good fit, you talk to our physician. Our physician will screen you. The, really, the only contradictions are if you are type 1 diabetic, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, or if you've been diagnosed with thyroid cancer. Those are really the only four things that are a, a no-go. Then from there, you come in, we we go over all the proper usage. I give my clients my two cents on nutrition and exercise. I, you know, I'm, I'll never tell someone to eat grains at all, let alone eight servings of grains like the food pyramid. So a lot of, you know, it bucks conventional wisdom. A lot of things that they're being told, you know, they're like, oh, do I got to eat a low fat diet? I'm like, no, you do not have to eat. Don't eat a low fat diet. You will become sick and depressed. What? What about my cholesterol? Like, we got a lot of work to do. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. They, yeah. So 
only the process, right? And then you come in, you you get your medication. I send it home with you. We check in. I have you log your food over the first two, three weeks. That time, I don't really want you to change anything. If you want to apply some of this, the knowledge that I gave you when you came in, great. But I really just want to observe how you're eating, what you're eating, around what times. And then from there, we can just make really small changes so that it doesn't seem so overwhelming at first. When you're firing a, a weapon, a minor adjustment here is a big adjustment downrange. Same type of thing. We can make small changes that executed over a long period of time. We get that compounding interest. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. No person that you admire in the health and wellness space for being healthy started this this year. They did it. They've been at this a really long time. It's the average of decisions they've made over five, 10 years that has gotten them to this point. And you need to understand that, you know, we're not robots. We're human beings. We have bad years. We have bad seasons. You like, you won't always catch that person that you're admiring in the best shape that they've ever been in. It's not possible. We're like gardens. Some days we need more water. Some days we need more sun. Some days we need more soil. That's another part of this whole thing too, is I encourage people get outside. That most people just, the only time they spend outside is when they're walking to their car and from their car to the office. So, you know, there's something in us where we we're, we evolved eating meals outside. It feels good. It's hot. I know it's not, <laughs> but I do it at least two or three times a week. Go outside to eat a meal, get your toes connected to the ground, get some sun on your skin. All of these things. Yeah. All of these things are so valid and really such a great point. You know, people just don't look like the way that they do because they woke up looking like that or feeling like that, even mentally, right? You, you don't have to have an Iron Man physique. You could be so strong mentally, but it takes work. And I think that is such a great point. And we can just go on and on. And it was just such a pleasure having you speak to us on our podcast. I feel like I've learned so much about peptides but it's just, you know, it's just the tip of the iceberg. And I think this type of therapeutic is really going to hit th the mainstream. So I'm so happy uh, for your success. And if anybody wants to learn more about Revo Wellness, how could they get in touch with you? Yeah, so on Instagram, we're Revo underscore wellness underscore. So Revo underscore wellness underscore. That's the best way to keep up with what we're doing. We're located downtown St. Petersburg. So 4th, at 4th Street and 11th Avenue North. Uh, we're having a little social party. So we're, we're throwing events and we're just trying to get people together. I'm also working on getting, you know, fresh farm food brought into Revo and I'm distributing it to people who want it. You know, raw milk, raw dairy, raw cream raw cheese, grass-fed beef, game meat, stuff like that, trying to impact the local food source, the quality of the local food source, and the quality of the local water source, working with a couple of really cool companies there. So if that's something that interests you, look us up, come check us out. I'll, I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. Thanks, Bryce. Yeah, Thank you fine. so much. Thanks for listening to the C3 Podcast. Find past episodes and subscribe on our website, codehealthshop.com, or Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, and YouTube. The Code Girls appreciate discussing conscious living with inspiring guests who make a difference. Remember, conscious living starts with conscious conversations. Until next time, be intentional, stay inspired, practice gratitude, be well and feel the drop. drop.